Hey everybody, um, this is just a pretty quick time lapse. It's, um, I think it's like almost 12 minutes long, but this deck took forever. Um, honestly, this portion of the deck build right now that Katie and I are working on, Katie is my sister. She is in the burgundy sweater and I am in the box sweater, <laughs> green leggings, that's my butt. Um, anywho, the part, what we're working on right now is getting the cement blocks placed for the, um, vertical posts that will go up. Each of these blocks have to be level on the ground, and you can't really tell in this shot, but where that big tree is off to the right hand side is a decent amount lower than where we're at. So as you can see here, once those blocks are placed, we took the four by fours vertically and then used some deck bracing that I bought from a local hardware store with the four by sixes and put those horizontally on top of those. Um, and that's what the subfloor will be sitting on. As you can see, Katie and I right now are unloading the pressure treated lumber for the portions that are painted white that are already done. I bought the wrong lumber and then my dad was kind enough to paint it for me so that it didn't rot in, you know, over the next few years or however long this damn yurt's up. Um, but I don't have a truck, so we just loaded everything up in my, uh, Forerunner, and it worked pretty well with the window down. The guys at the lumber yard think I'm pretty crazy, um, because putting so much weight inside a small car that's not really made for that, but, you know, we gotta do what we can with what we have. And we're done unloading, ready to rock and roll. So, um... I took off a week from work to work on the deck, so I did a lot of this um, by myself or Katie helped on weekends when she was home from work. So right now what we're doing is we're just making sure everything's level, going vertically, and then also in order to get the height for the 4x4s since it's such a, um, a sloped ground, we actually would then take the level on a 4x6 from the other 4x4 that we already finished and just pull level off of the front piece to make sure that it fits perfectly level all the way through. Then I'm just using a handsaw, not a handsaw, a circular saw, and my little cutting station. Caitlin refuses to use the saw, so all of the cutting was done by me. Um, she really enjoyed once we, she found the impact to screw in the uh, subfloor. She's obsessed with it, so she did a lot of that screwing that you'll be able to see in the future. Building this deck was probably one of the most difficult things for me to wrap my head around. Um, it's, the yurt in total was completely the largest scale of anything I've ever constructed in my life. Of course I did the catio, but I didn't have to <laughs> make sure that was structurally sound because there weren't going to be humans walking around in it, so it didn't really matter. Um, but luckily the instruction folder, it was, I don't even know how many pages, it was probably like 50 pages that, um, came from Pacific Yurts was super helpful getting everything put together. It was really kind of like they broke down building a yurt into Ikea instructions, except everything was in English, which was super helpful. Um, my dad and my mom are also here. My mom's a really good helper 
when you need things to get done, but she can a holder of things. Um, but I think she, power tools kind of intimidate her. Uh, but she's really, really helpful. And my dad was a rock star when trying to get this yurt together. He was down there some mornings before I was. So I'm trying to help me out, which I really appreciate. So they're working on putting the blocking on the outside and this will kind of hold the edges of the deck down and Katie and I are working on getting the concrete in for the blocking. We hadn't done that yet. Um, so we're doing the concrete around the cement blocks. just so that they stay in place and none of the gravel goes anywhere once we get some snow that has melted and, you know, tons of rain that we usually will get. Another thing that I didn't think was going to be as much of an issue as it actually was was just getting supplies. It probably took just the one in, an inch and a quarter sub floor that Katie and I are working on right now to make sure we're staggering the seams. Um, one of my friends came up with his truck because I, the boards were too big to fit in my forerunner and because I didn't think ahead to order it and get the lumber and the supplies delivered we it took us probably six to seven hours and a trip to three different hardware stores and lumber yards to get enough sheets to cover up this deck so and you can only put so much weight in the back of the truck because it's you know not a commercial delivery truck or anything so I was going to do this again, or if you guys are planning on building a yurt, I would definitely order your lumber ahead of time. Pacific Yurts gives you a cut sheet that it tells you exact lengths of everything you'll need. Um, go ahead and order that ahead of time, along with your support, and just pay to get it delivered. It will save you so much time and money in the long run, because depending on where you go to purchase your lumber, they'll a lot of the time will give you a discount for um, large orders like this. So just do that. Save yourself time, money, and it will be a lot less stressful. So once we get everything staggered out, we go through and drill with screws into the four by sixes just to make sure that the floor is nice and solid secured down because this is pretty much exactly what the yurt will be sitting on there's a little bit of a trim that goes around the outside once you cut it to circle and that is the yurt walls butt up to that space So I think, if I recall, because it's probably been, I think this is in November when we're doing this. Um, and I'm recording this voiceover on September 3rd. So I think it's almost, it's almost been a full year since we got the deck done. But it took us about at least a month to get the yurt deck up and cut and ready for the yurt to go on top of it. So it's a lot of work, especially if you're not able to, you know, focus your your entire energy on it.
So we're just putting the finishing touches. And then once we're done with the last couple of pieces on the north side, we cut this bad boy into a circle, which took, I think, 12 batteries to get this done because you have to use a jigsaw and it uses so much power compared to a drill or the circular saw. So it took me, I think, a full weekend because, of course, I don't have electricity. So I had to, you know, leave and charge my batteries and then come back and then you use them for maybe an hour to two hours and then they would be dead again and then I would leave and go charge my batteries. So, yeah. I love my yurt. Thank you for watching. And then the next video will be us putting up the yurt walls.